Hey, what's up, family? It's your man, Daryl II. I hope you're doing well. I want to drop this word, but before I do, let's bring it to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this morning to be able to wake up once again, to be able to see the sunrise, to be able to open my eyes and see what I see, to have the ability to breathe, God, um, to be able to function and live life and to just have another day above ground. That is truly a gift from you, God, because it is not something that we ourselves can control. And so I want to say thank you. I pray, God, that this message would be one that glorifies you. I pray that those who hear it, their lives will be touched by the power that you bring in it and more souls brought to your kingdom. And I pray that we would be people who are kingdom citizens who live for you, but also allow you to work through our lives to minister and touch the lives of other people. I pray, God, that you would have your way in our lives and that we would surrender. And if there's anything in me not of you, I pray you remove it, cleanse me, sanctify me, purify me, and let this message be anointed breathed upon and glorifying unto you in the name of jesus i pray amen relationships pardon me i'm a retainer in relationships can make or break your life it's very important that you consider who you interact with and who you spend time with um especially on a very close level because relationships can be like a vehicle you can get in some relationships that lead to a dead end or that don't go anywhere you can really lead to get in some relationships that take you to higher altitudes. And it's very important that you recognize the characteristics that of good relationships versus bad ones. So I wanted to reference a few scriptures to help you out. Amos 3, 3 says, how can two walk together unless they agree? That's very true. Imagine you being in partnership with someone and they're going this way and you're going this way. But you guys are trying to be linked up. It's got to be a strain because you guys are not united in the position that you want to go. You're not going forward together. You're trying to go different directions. And so it's very important to um, understand the, the mindset, the vision, and the people that you interact with. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. You may have a vision, but you may have the wrong person associated with that vision. And it can completely contaminate or disrupt the flow that God may have in your life and prevent a level of continuity because there are two oppositional viewpoints at work. And that's why it's important. If a person has their viewpoint, you may have to let them go and do their own vision while you do yours. And so there's a season for everything. You may have a season where you all may have been on one accord, but a new season comes and it's time for that relationship to conclude. And so you have to be okay with that because there are some partnerships that are lifetime and then there are some that are seasonal and it's important to understand which is which because you can try to make a seasonal relationship a lifetime relationship and that is a headache so that's amos 3 3 and then proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says this uh, here we go he who walks with the wise grows wise but a companion of fools suffers harm you know there have been times in my life where i've I had the opportunity to um, walk among wise individuals and gain a great deal out of the interaction from them. Godly people that God allowed to be a part of my life and I was able to gain a great deal from. And then there were instances where God gave me wisdom. I was able to impart to others as well. And then there were times where I hung and was a companion of individuals who were not so wise. They were on the opposite end of that spectrum. And what ended up happening is I found myself in situations that I had no business being in. I found my life impacted in ways that otherwise would not have been had I had been careful of where I kept, where I took my feet. And so it's very important to understand that even though you can be cool with people and get along with people, not everyone should be in real close proximity or in your inner circle because sometimes people can have things in their life that can contaminate the waters in your life. And so it's important for you to realize that, you know, the Bible says bad company corrupts good character. One translation says bad company corrupts good morals. It's very true. And sometimes you have to understand you have to distance yourself. I mean, imagine having a cup of clean water and a cup of nasty water. If you mix the clean water and the nasty water, the clean water becomes nasty. You going to drink it? No. If you mix the nasty in the clean water, the clean water still becomes nasty. You going to drink it? No. And so... It's important for you to realize that, you know, you may sit there wanting to help people draw them to the Lord. And while that's admirable and it's noble, if God did not call you to that place as an assignment, you're wasting your time and you're putting yourself at risk to be contaminated. And also, even if you're drawing people to the Lord, that doesn't mean that you have to compromise who you are in order to do so. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be distinct. We're called to be um, 
light and darkness. You know, the Bible talks about light extinguishing darkness. Jesus said that when a city is on a hill, you don't cover it up. No, the light shines forth. And so when you are walking with the Lord, the light of Jesus on the inside will draw people to you because you are a vessel for his light. So you don't have to say, well, I need to assimilate. I need to blend in. I need to be like, you know, the old saying, when Rome, do as the Romans do. I have to compromise and conform to an idea or a persona to win this person to the Lord. Nah, man, you don't have to do all that because now you're not being authentic. You're not being honest and you're putting on an outward mask. And that's, that's actually hypocritical. No, be yourself and who the Lord has called to be drawn to your life will be drawn to your life. Those who are not called to be drawn won't be drawn. But if you are not walking in who God made you to be, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be ineffective. And so it's important for you to simply be who he made you to be. And so be mindful of the company you keep. Be mindful of who you are. Okay. In fact, I just came across the scripture, Proverbs 13, verse 9. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Just come going along with what we said. You got a bright light. Um, I think I may, oh, one more scripture. Second Corinthians 6, 14. Here we go. I think I might have said that. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Do not be yoked with unbelievers. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing, says the Lord. I'm sorry. Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. There's a clear distinction, a mark of who he is in our lives and we represent him. And I have had experiences and you will too, an opportunity to conform and compromise where those who don't walk with the Lord will try to get you entangled in things or in yoked with relationship to them. And sometimes we live in a world where we don't network. And again, network is cool, but you have to understand there's some populations God ain't call you to. Um, some things you don't want to come into agreement with. I remember years ago at a job, um, someone invited me to take part in something that they um, were connected to outside of the job. It was related to business. And I considered it, but I remember, I think I either had a dream. It was a dream, I believe, or the Lord spoke to me. But in one way or another, the Lord spoke to me. And um, I think it was through a word, actually. And I think it might have been this scripture. But he basically was letting me know not to do that, not to take part, do not come into agreement with this. And so I didn't do it. It was a warning. And, and as I got to know uh, this person over time, I began to see the fruits of this person's character. And I began to understand why God was like, do not connect with this person. And so when you allow God, he will show you the characteristics of people. And again, as believers, we're not righteous in our own strength. We're righteous because of our faith in Jesus. But it's important for us to realize there's a reason why he tells us not to do certain things. You know, sometimes people can look at us and say, you're extreme, you're this. No, just be who God made you to be. And I want to make something clear in the book of Ecclesiastes. It says, if you try to be too righteous or too wise, you'll destroy yourself. If you try to be wicked, you'll die before your time. But a person who fears God avoids both those extremes. Fearing God is the reverence and respect, the awe, the, 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 the relationship with God of honoring him, putting him first. And sometimes not everybody's going to understand that. Sometimes people are going to look at you like you're extreme, you're crazy. It don't take all that. But when you're living a life for the Lord and you're allowing his spirit to lead you, to govern your heart, because God said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So he's not forcing himself. But when you allow him to govern your life, you're going to be different. And people are going to recognize there's something about you. I don't know what it is, but there's something different about you. Because people are drawn to that. They're attracted to that. Because God may bring people to your life because he may have a word in you for them. He may see... He may allow them to see his blessings in your life, and they may want to know who Jesus is simply by watching you. And so don't contaminate the water that's in you by trying to be something you're not. No, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. The Bible says in Romans 12, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says, do not conform to the world, the patterns of its lust, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we spend time in God's word, we're allowing him to renew our mind because our mind is a part of our flesh and our flesh 
often is at war against the spirit of God. In fact, Jesus said when they were in the garden of Gethsemane, when he asked the disciples to pray, he went to pray and they fell asleep. And he said to me, y'all could not tarry with me not one hour. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And it's very true. And so what we do is we edify our souls. We feed our spirit. We feed ourselves with the word of God. And it's imperative for you to do that because we wage war not only against our flesh, but against the enemy in a variety of ways. And as believers, we are children of the light. We live in a crooked and perverse generation, and it is imperative for us to continually walk with our Savior. There are a number of individuals who have a counterfeit gospel, a counterfeit Jesus, a counterfeit representation of the Lord. But when we walk with the Lord, the authenticity of God, the power of God, who he truly is, Christ crucified, death buried, resurrected, his spirit of God, the truth, the spirit of truth, he lives within us and people are able to recognize the distinction by how we live. And so I encourage you today to yield yourself into the Lord and allow yourself to be recognized by, by people because you serve him. And so be very mindful of the fellowship. Now, again, God may bring you in connection with people who don't know him. That's different because, you know, we're in the world. We're going to meet people who don't know God. But when you're in tight, tight, tight proximity with people who are not in the Lord and they're of the world, you have to be careful because if God did not bring an assignment to you in that person, you are putting yourself in position to be contaminated in some areas because you are connecting with people. And they may be good people. They may be cool people character wise but they don't know the Lord and so it could really interact and compact impact how you live your life and that happens that's why you pray that's why you fast that's why you say God show me should I connect with this person should I not he'll tell you I think I referenced this um, in some videos ago I had a friend years ago I used to work with and I used to minister to about the word good guy and we were talking about the word a lot but over time my season was coming to an end I found myself more influenced by his behavior then he influenced my mind. I found myself starting to go places I had no business going because I was allowing myself to be, um, I guess I was getting, that spirit was wearing me down. And it wasn't so much him, it was because he lived that life. He wasn't a bad dude, but I had no business being in some of those places because I'm a child of God and I have no business being there. I'm set apart. And I'm sure when I was at those places, people saw me like, what are you doing here? And so again, it's important. Walk in who God made you to be, be who you are, and be mindful of the company you keep because the relationships can make or break you. And so I believe that's all I wanted to say. 2 Corinthians 6, Amos 3.3, 3, Proverbs 13.20. And to know those who labor among you, I will add that as well. Now, before I close, if there's anybody watching, you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father. The only way to have one is with his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross. And that God the Father raised him back from the dead. And if you ask him to come into your heart, you will be saved from the penalty of your sins. You will go to heaven, not hell. Your name will be written in the book of life. And it's important to know Jesus because when you leave this earth, eternity awaits. Heaven or hell. And if you don't know Jesus and have a relationship with him, it's not heaven you're going. It's hell. He doesn't want that. That's why he offered himself as a sacrifice for all of humanity. But it's up to us to receive him as our Lord and our Savior in order to be adopted in the family of God. If we reject him, we reject our own salvation and we don't go to heaven. We go to hell because we're judged by the life we lived and we're judged by rejection of Jesus. Because he said right there, he said, um, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He has created an opportunity for us to have new life, to be born again, to be partners in the kingdom of God. But we have to willingly receive. And so as a Christian, there will be times you're persecuted, times you're not liked, times you're hated. But it is a blessed experience because you are born again. You have purpose and you have relationship with the creator of the universe because this world is passing away and everything we know it. And there's going to come a day when the elements themselves will be burned with fire, when the atmosphere, the sky, the solar system will be rolled up like a map. God is coming back. He's sending his son to come back to take those who are his. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. The goats are the rebellious individuals who rejected God. The sheep are his children. Who will you be? Choose ye this day whom you will serve because tomorrow's not promised. The next five minutes is not promised. And you just don't know where you're going to end up in eternity. So while you have the opportunity, come to know Jesus. Because when you die, I shouldn't say you don't know you because I've just told you. But you don't know when your last breath will be. And it's not about your works that get you into heaven. The Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags. But when we place our faith in Jesus, his righteousness, it's imputed. It comes to us. We become righteous. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin and we are born again by his spirit in our hearts. 
The next thing to do would get into a Bible-based church and then get baptized in water. So if you want to know Jesus, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. If you want to know Jesus, I want to encourage you right now to just follow this prayer with me. And if you, you got to mean it from the heart. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God brought you back from the dead. Please come in my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you did that, you're born again. Get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. Before I go, if you want some good reading, my mom wrote a book for new believers. It's called A New Life in Christ Jesus, a great book. Her name is Marvell Alder. I highly recommend it. It's on Amazon. And then I also wrote a book called Random Thoughts of a Believer, Life Lessons for the Believer. Great reads. They're very instructional, biblically based, and they will bless you. I got to get off. I got to get ready for work. But it's always a pleasure. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and Twitter. God bless you.